Stories of Māori Urban Migration, Another Māori Face by Wutarina Harris. Part 1. Early Days in Wellington I was lonely going to Wellington from Rotorua. I felt free in whatever I did at home. Then I went to Wellington. The fact was that in Wellington there weren't any Māori faces around. They were all Pākehā faces. When Apirana Nata approached my mother to see if I could work for him, she rang a Pākehā friend of hers in Wellington to see if I could stay, to settle in. Mrs Pierce said, Yes, certainly. So it was a Pākehā home I went into. When I came to Wellington, this thing sort of built up within me. I thought, I want to see a Māori face. I was looking for a Māori face to make me feel I was not the only Māori here. I'd go to work, I was Api's typist. I would see all these big buildings and all these Pākehā faces and think, Oh, where am I? There was nothing where I could sort of feel at home, nothing. This lasted for about three weeks. Sometimes I'd leave work and go to the pictures at the Roxy and Manor Street and I'd cry. I'd just go there and cry and cry, you know. I was so lonely. And it just happened that this day I was in there and the lights came on at interval. I looked and saw this black hair. Oh, I'm sure that's a Māori. Oh, I hope it's a Māori. I was in tears. The woman with black hair stood up to go out and she came towards me. And it was Tete. It was my own cousin from home. She saw me and I saw her and I forgot everybody else. I said, hey, and she said, we, and we met in the aisle in the Roxy and we cried and cried and cried. My loneliness disappeared. From that day on, I knew I wasn't alone. Tete put her arms around me and she said, where are you staying? I said, I'm staying in a Pākehā house. Very kind people, but they're Pākehā. And of course, typical Māori, she said, when I go home, I'll see if they agree for you to come. She stayed with the Māori family. Of course, when she asked them, they said, yes, bring her home. From then on, Wellington was a wonderful place. That's all I wanted, to see another Māori face. Part 2. Living in Wellington It was a really family home that I went into. It was like a pa. It was a meeting place for young people. Every Sunday, the young people who worked in the government departments or wherever would meet there. We'd go to the beach at Evans Bay in the morning when the tide was out and collect bags of tuangi, cockles. Then we'd go around to Scorching Bay where there was kuku and paua. We only needed to go in ankle deep. We had kits or sometimes a little sugar bag because there was such a lot there. I remember one of the boys had a Pākehā girlfriend. She used to come to the church meetings with us and we'd ask her to stay for lunch. She'd say, what are those black things? And we'd say, Pawa, go on, try some. Eventually she thought she'd better try it and after that she bid us to the table every time. They were lovely cooked like that, soft and lovely. Part 3. Getting Married I worked with Api three years and then I married in 1932. My husband, Reg, was a Pākehā. I first saw him through a peephole on the curtain before a concert in Rotorua before I moved to Wellington. He was on holiday. One of the girls said, have a look, that one there. The first things I saw were his teeth, his lovely fingernails and his blue eyes. I had a weakness for blue eyes. I fell in love with the outside of him and didn't get to know the inside until too late. The wedding was just myself and Reg, with the virgin president of the Mothers' Union roped in as a witness. Nobody else came. I thought the worst thing would be having to ask my mother if I could marry a Pākehā, so I didn't ask her. Soon after the wedding, Api was going through Rotorua and suggested I go with him. So I went and Ridge came up by himself. I told Mum we'd got married. What could she say? I think she was disappointed, but she accepted the situation. And she couldn't do enough for us, buying us linen and things. Maybe she was trying to get a bit more love from me. Then it was Ridge's turn to take me home to meet his parents. This was a Pākehā situation and, oh, I was nervous when we went to their home. It was a bungalow. I thought, nice house, I wonder what type of parents. The door opened. His mother and father were at the door. My mother-in-law was lovely. She put her arms around me. But when I turned to father, he was standing there very reserved, very English. He just bowed and went back to his posse in the sunroom. Ridge's parents were closed Plymouth brethren and my father-in-law was a real Englishman, cold. He never spoke to me, he'd just nod. Every Wednesday, Reg and I had to have midday dinner with them. I used to dread it. Father at the head of the table, he didn't like Reg marrying a Māori. He'd never had anything to do with Māori people. They were Pākehā and lived a Pākehā life. He didn't speak to me till my first son, Riri, was nearly nine months old. That was a lot of Wednesdays. I won him over, but it took a long time. Part 4. Living with Reg I didn't have any experience of living with Pākehā people. The Pākehā way of life was different, more regulated. 
and I thought, I'm married to Reg now, I've got to live his life. And I didn't oppose it. All I ever said was, yes dear, yes dear, whatever you say. The atmosphere at our home was a very Pākehā atmosphere. I wasn't allowed to speak Māori at home or to our sons. For Reg, it would have meant that he wouldn't know what was being said. Once, my brother came to see me unexpectedly. You know, in a Māori home, your relations come to see you. They just arrive on your doorstep. But this embarrassed Reg. He wanted to be informed beforehand. My brother felt this coldness and wouldn't come back. I loved singing, but Reg didn't want me in concert parties. He didn't like the fact my voice was attracting attention. I loved doing our Māori things, but if there was a hui on and I went down to Ngāti Pōneke, I would have to go home again for tea. I couldn't stay longer. I couldn't go out at night. It was terrible. He just wanted me to stay home. I think he really only wanted me for himself. I was frustrated, especially when sometimes I'd go over to my cousin's house. She is a Pākehā's husband too, but he was proud of her. He'd let her do anything. I'd grizzle to Mama, but she wasn't a bit sorry. You picked him, she'd say. He's your husband and the boss of your household. Oh, I had no guts. I didn't stand up to him at all. Yes, dear, yes, dear. I was a softie, all right. I lived in that Pākehā world for the next 50 years, and my children lived in a Pākehā world. I went to Ngāti Pōneki just to cling to my Māori side.